I have to say that when it comes to strong statements about human emotions, we do not find that very often in the New Testament. Yes, with regard to Jesus' agony in the garden and the suffering of the cross, you might say we might find some of the more deeper and revealing statements of feelings and emotions. But the Old Testament is filled with all of the different situations human beings find themselves in. Today's scripture passage for the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time from the book of Kings describes the situation of Elijah in a particularly, you might say, revealing and important way. Elijah had been very successful in putting the prophets of Baal, the, the, the foreign god that many of the Israelites started to follow because of Jezebel, the queen at that time. He was very successful in, in uh, indicating how weak they were and how poor they were in, in their understanding of God. And yet, subsequent to this wonderful success, he is met by a great amount of opposition and then of a plot by Jezebel to destroy him too. So he flees. He flees into the desert. And he comes to the point in his life where he says something that maybe some of you have felt the same way as the prophet Elijah did. He says, he prayed for death, saying, this is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. I mean, it's almost like a total emotional and psychological collapse. His whole spirit, everything is just done. He just does not have any energy left. And then a revealing episode takes place to an angel of the Lord. Now, it's interesting, the angel of the Lord doesn't say anything to him. The angel of the Lord gives him something to eat. And it is described as a hearth cake and a jug of water. Very basic, very basic. And he eats and, and, and drinks what's given to him. The angel comes back a second time and says, you know, get up and go on. You have, you have, a more, of, you have more of a long journey in your life to continue. This very beautiful, I think very beautiful uh, description of the prophet Elijah is something all of us can relate to. Because there are times in life when if we don't come to a complete, exhausted, you might say, and totally depressed situation, we are totally defeated. And we wonder, is there any energy left? Is there any worthwhileness for me to do? This is enough, O oh Lord. <laughs> How many times some of us may have said this. Oh, Lord, can you, can you, are you going to give me another issue or problem to deal with? This is enough, O oh Lord. But this scripture passage has so much implications for us who are believers in Jesus and it corresponds in a very particular way to the, the gospel, which is from the gospel of St. John. We continue to reflect on Jesus being the bread of life and what that means. In the scripture passage today, we, we hear of uh, the reaction by some of the people of uh, the Jews. They're all Jews. I mean, Jesus is a Jew. The disciples that follow Jesus are Jews. Those who don't like Jesus are Jews. So everybody's a, everybody's a Jew, you might say, in the, in, at least at this time in this gospel passage. But they start arguing with him. He kept saying, I'm, I'm the bread come down from heaven. And they say, hey, hold, hold it a minute. We know who you are, Jesus. You're the son of Joseph. We know your mother and father. So please don't give us any kind of special uh, the dignity you have coming from God. And Jesus says, no, no. The father draws you to me. You will understand that he is giving you life through me. And I am the bread of life that gives eternal life. It's very interesting, he says, I am the bread of life. And we who are Christians who participate in the Holy Supper of the Lord, 
know that meaning of that bread of life. And it really is something that sustains and strengthens. In a very real way, we might come to Mass or a Sunday saying, this is enough, Lord, I just can't take it anymore. And if we open our hearts with faith and belief and truly partake of this holy bread that is the body and blood of Christ, there's a marvelous outpouring of the Holy Spirit that can touch us and renew us and revivify us uh, as God's people. It's very interesting uh, that uh, a hearth cake, a hearth cake, what does that mean? Uh, it's, it, it's something you would make like on a griddle or you make right on the open fire. So it's not something very elaborate. It's not a cake like we think of the word cake, something very sweet. It's a very basic kind of food. It would be like a flatbread today. Um, maybe even like a pancake might be the closest equivalent to it. And our Eucharistic hosts, if you don't even know it, they are, they are baked very, very shortly on a griddle and then they're impressed and they make those little round hosts uh, out of uh, like, a, like a long sheet uh, of this bread, this uh, uh, unleavened bread that we use in the Catholic Church. So that's a heart cake. In a very real sense, you are receiving the divine hearth cake. Jesus is the hearth cake of our lives. Uh, he is the one who gives us strength. I am the living bread come down from heaven, who reach this bread will live forever. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Receive it, accept it, and discover, like Elijah, you'll have enough strength in your heart to continue the journey as he did. Get up, eat. He, he ate and drank, and then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. God bless you.